the news is all about Prince Charles, heir to the throne, and Princess Diana. They have separated, officially. By the fall of 1995, Diana and Charles had been separated for nearly three years. That September, while visiting friends at Royal Brompton Hospital, Diana met a handsome 35-year-old heart surgeon named Hasnat Khan. Diana and Hasnat had a sort of um, cinematic meeting. It took place in the hospital where Dr. Khan worked as a surgeon, and Diana was visiting a friend there, and in fact, her friend's husband was being rushed through the hospital um, by Dr. Khan, and they kind of laid eyes on each other, and Diana saw this very dashing, handsome young surgeon, and he barely noticed her, which was something Diana was not accustomed to. So I think that must have made him infinitely, like to any woman, more appealing. And I'm sure for Princess Diana, that had never happened, where somebody didn't instantly kind of go, oh my goodness, you're Princess Diana. So I found a very normal person. A normal person with great qualities, and of course there's some, you know, um, personal drawbacks like we have, like habits, for example. And I think she did a great uh, work for the country and for people all over the world. Diana quickly created a cover story so she could visit the hospital every day for the next three weeks. She planted a story with one of the tabloids telling them that, you know, she was visiting sick patients there just to kind of deflect interest in the real reason she was visiting. Of course, Diana did visit sick patients around the world and that was a, a huge um, passion for her. But in this case, she was also clearly pursuing Hasnat Khan. I mean, who doesn't love like a surgeon that's that handsome, like he's off a kind of TV soap who's performing open heart surgery and you go and watch him and he's doing like heroic things. It ticked every box for her that she loved because he was helping people. She loved to help people. So it was, it was an amazing combination. Diana described Hasnet Khan as Mr. Wonderful. I asked him if he thought he's lived up to that title. Oh, really? I'm just a, any, any sort of guy who likes his, uh, his profession. Diana was clearly smitten with Hasnat Khan, but the question was, how would she go about dating him? She's the most famous woman on the planet, and she's still officially married to the future King of England. So, as anyone can imagine, Diana and Hasnat Khan cannot go out on regular date nights, right? They would be relentlessly, sadly, pursued. And so they had to find kind of stealth ways of meeting up. And one of those ways was for Hasnat to meet Diana at her home, which was Kensington Palace in London. And these dates would would be very low key. There was a real sort of teenager feel to it. There were things like, you know, cigarettes, leftover Kentucky Fried Chicken packets. Like you never imagined Princess Diana having takeout or doing those kind of teenager in love things. But I think it came at a point in her life where she just really relished having her normality back. I think because she got married so young, she never really had that real teenager, heady feeling of being in love. Kensington Palace was protecting them from the paparazzi, but Diana and Hasnat both knew they couldn't hide out forever. Diana truly loved Hasnat Khan, and she wanted to be able to have a life with him, but he felt that her fame, the brutal press attention, the restrictions from the royal family would make it untenable for them to be able to have a lasting marriage. Hasnat Khan was a deeply private person, and despite his love and affection for Diana, he didn't want a public life. So at one point, he suggested that the only way that they could really make it work would be to leave England behind, start a new life in his homeland, which was Pakistan, and Diana considered it. Diana at one point even met with Hasnat's family in Pakistan during one of her visits. She really liked the days she spent here, I think. And meeting your family, that must have been a special moment for her and for them. Uh, I think it definitely was for my family, and I think she enjoyed the afternoon tea with them. I think they both knew that the, the, it, it couldn't really happen. She couldn't go and live in Pakistan as, you know, the surgeon's wife and still be mother to Harry and William and still keep her public commitments and still do that. It just tragically couldn't happen. By the end of June 1997, the nearly two-year romance was over. Ultimately, the two of them reached a stalemate because Diana's life was what it was in the spotlight, and Hasnat was not willing to compromise 
his privacy um, for her. So they were not able to work through that, despite the fact that they deeply cared for each other. Only two months after the breakup, Diana was gone. Among the hundreds inside Westminster Abbey, Hasnut Khan, the man Diana's friends called the love of her life, looks on. Wearing the sunglasses she'd given him as a gift, his gaze lingers on her coffin as it's borne away. Hasnut Khan refused to speak publicly about the relationship for more than a decade until a 2008 interview with the Sunday Telegraph. Hasnat Khan has only ever spoken about Diana really one time. And this was coming after the inquest into her death. He sort of came out and said, listen, this is the only time I'm gonna speak. I'm doing it now so that everyone hopefully will leave me alone forevermore. And when he did finally speak, what he said was, I'm full of admiration and respect for Diana. He talked about her humanitarian work. He did not reveal a single personal detail about their relationship because that was something that was really sacred to him. I hope it settles um, all the questions which have been asked. And for me, I think it's important that it's, this is the end of it and people can move on. And uh, because it just keeps coming back you know, every year or sometimes twice a year. And I think that's what I would like to see um, this inquest will establish an end to it.